Oh God. Okay, hi, I'm Lee from Lena's Sweet Life and Foodie Book Club. This is the lovely Lizzie who is just gonna give us away, but she's in the office right now because she's expecting this phone call maybe, so she's got on mute, which is probably a good thing because you know she talks a lot. Um, no, she doesn't like it. <laughs> and this is the fabulous Gemma Austin, who is, oh, she's a goddess in the kitchen and I am so thrilled that she's agreed to do this for Foodie Book Club. So Gemma, tell us where you are right now so um, we are in uh, my restaurant, Alexander's Co. in Hollywood, Northern Ireland. And you were just saying that you're having a big redo, aren't you? So we're very lucky to be actually just be in your kitchen now. Yeah, we're having a re redo. Revamp. Oh, sorry, we were, sorry this, the sound isn't great because the fans went, went off there. Okay. Uh, yes, well, we're actually renovating the restaurant at the minute um, for hopefully the reopening on the 24th of May. All being well, that's, that's our guidelines now for reopening. So. We're really looking forward to getting it open and getting started. Of course, it's different, isn't it, for Ireland than than um, England? I forget that we so there's that sort of border thing going on, isn't there? Whereas, so you're yeah. bigger than us. Yes. Yeah, so no, Northern Ireland at the minute is the 24th. I think the South of Ireland is the 7th of June. Oh. Um, but it's to be it's to be confirmed. So hopefully, hopefully they stick with that date. You know. Yeah. And if people want to book, what do they have to do? People want to book. Yep. Um, so if people want to book, uh, we are on Open Table, which is online. So you just go on to Open Table online, type in Alexander Co. Um, and then you can book from any time from the 24th of May onwards. Some are open seven days a week. Fabulous. And you're on our list, Lizzie and I. So tell us what you're going to cook. And I've seen a picture of this already. And it's like, I just want to dip my face in it, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are going to make a seafood chowder today, um, obviously. Very simple recipe, simple ingredients, but when it's all done together, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, we actually do this in the restaurant at the minute. We have a couple of outside tables, so we've been doing a wee bit of out, outdoor dining. Um, so we had made a fish stock in advance, um, but I have sent you the recipe for the fish stock um, if you just want to make it at home or else otherwise. Of course, you could just use you know fish bouillon or um, some sort of like a fish stock cube. We'll sort of do the same job, but if not um, any like seafood supplier or anything like that, they can give you the bones, the carcass of the fish, which means um, you can just roast that off, add it in with your mirepoise. So we have, I've actually got it up here just so you can see what it is. Yeah, let's see. Um, so if we put, uh, so we've got onions, we've got uh, leeks, a bit of celery and onion, and then we've just got a couple of herbs and stuff in this. So our um, bay leaves, got a bit of thyme there, fennel, some garlic and some black peppercorns. And that, that, that uh, this along with your um, with your fish carcass and your um, water, you just let that boil over. That's going to make your stock then, and that's going to be the base of the charter sauce. And you know what? We, it, people get a bit scared when that when they make your own stock, but actually, it's the easiest thing in the world, and probably the cheapest, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's incredible. It's incredibly um, cheap, super effective, and it's really good for uh, for food waste as well because you don't always have to use. You know the nice part of the onion you know if you're if you're throwing away the skins of a carrot or any sort of vegetable should always be kept and used as a stock because you know your vegetables go into your fish stock your meat stock and um, or just a vegetable stock you know and it's super easy to make Um, it just it can be a bit time consuming obviously the longer you leave a stock on the more in, intense the flavor is going to be Um, but uh, it's super easy to make and i definitely recommend for anybody that's throwing you know any vegetables or anything in the waste just to keep them and use them for that stuff yeah and you know what we ha i hate the whole food waste it drives me absolutely up the wall so this is great and stock it'll freeze as well so even you know put the stock on go and watch your tv program and then let it cool and you can freeze it yeah you just let just let it tick away and you can freeze it and i'll keep it the month uh, in the freezer for up to three months um as long as it's in properly and that's the same with any stock you know a, a nice gravy or a nice shoe is always made from a, a really good meat stock so um, it's definitely it definitely brings the flavor to a lot of the dishes that we cook in the restaurant. Awesome. So let's get started. Then we've got your stock, which the recipe is on my website, so you can see it there. Yes. So we've got our stock, and um, I actually have that in a pan that was just simmering there. Yeah. And then, so we have some of the other ingredients that we use here. So um, I basically I kept it whole, just so you can see it. And this is a, a haddock. Uh -huh. So we cut this up. This is the we mix that we're using here. So we have some haddock and um, we've got some um, smoked cod in there. We've got some salmon, but really any any sort of 
finish, I would always recommend putting a smoky fish in a trouter because it brings out a lovely taste and a lovely yeah. flavour in it. And then we've just got some really simple, really simple ingredients here. Um, we have some peas, we've got some leeks that we blanched, we've some baby boy potatoes here that we have cooked so they're already soft, and then we have some bacon lard on fried off as well. And Gemma, for, for the, you know, the smoked bacon in, in most supermarkets, you can actually ask the, the fishmonger or in the f fridge section. There's also those offcuts, isn't there? There's offcuts yeah. in the fish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously as a restaurant, um, we can get in and you can buy it. You know, I actually seen it in Little yesterday. You can get a seafood charter mix. So instead of having to indiv individually buy it, um, you can just buy the mix already and they will usually always include a smoked fish in that just because it really inten intensifies that flavour. Um, so this is basically, this is all the ingredients it takes to make a seafood chowder. Obviously with your cream as well, we want the chowder to be nice and creamy at the end. And yeah. um, then we, at the very end, we just add a wee bit of corn flour just to thicken it up and make sure that's cooked out. Um, and it, it's as simple as that. And then chowder is obviously, we serve it with, um, with wheat and bread here. Um, and we've got a lovely, the uh, Abernethy smoked butter here. This is an Irish butter that's, that's turned. Um, Look at the that. Restaurant here. So, um, Look at the beauty. That's a that's a thing of beauty, that that butter, I have to say. Right. Oh, it's amazing. I, use, I actually use it in Great British Menu as well. It's it's hard to beat. And, you know, they do a lot of different uh, flavoured butters now as well. And it's really taken off. But you can tell that the, it's just, it's so local and it's so fresh, you know. So, and that's what we serve in the restaurant with any sort of bread that we give out just because we're we're really into supporting local here and it's all about local produce especially after the year that we've just had and everybody's sort of feeling it so the more we can keep within the island the better you know well you start cooking and i just want to ask you some questions as you as you yeah have. of course no problem um and well if you cook and then i'll ask you a question then we can catch up what you're putting in in a second can't we but the, th the thing is like um everybody's been locked away um at you guys i mean i've said this to you pre pre now you know you've gone from 18 hours a day working in the kitchen to nothing uh what have you been doing to keep your yourself busy and what's what has it done to your emotional well-being and i know we've just stopped here but um i hope this can oh there you go oh no here we go ahead sorry can you hear me okay yeah, we just had a stop in the thing, but you know, so I was just going to say you've gone from 18 hours to like, from, from busy, busy, busy to doing nothing. Tell me about what that's done, what you've been up to and tell me about what that's done to your emotional well-being. And Yeah, so um, we have, um, Lauren and I actually run a pop-up called A Peculiar Tea um, in Belfast that is a massive seller. You know, we have 500 people on the wait list at the minute for the next one. So um when we do that, it's it's different to what we do in the restaurant. Um, Alexander's and Co. What we have here, the the idea with this restaurant is to cook hearty food, um, just in a really good way. And um, a peculiar tea is sort of our opportunity to do something really outside the box. So we will put on, say, like a seven course tasting menu. Um, and within that, I'm originally a pastry chef, um, and I've a massive passion for pastry. So every other course at the pop up is a sweet course, um because I don't think that we ever really have enough street in, in, our, in our tasting menus here. You know, it's always at the end. Usually by the time they, you get to dessert, people are full and they don't really give it, um, it doesn't get the recognition that it needs, even though pastry is probably uh, one of the hardest areas in a kitchen to work in. Um, so what we done during lockdown was um, we done at home boxes. Uh, so we were sending, say, five course tasting menus home to people to cook. We sent instructions with it. We prepped it in the restaurants and they basically got a dining experience at home. So that's what we've been doing and um, why we've been off. On top of that, the first lockdown, um, we had been doing a takeaway service. We were doing some street food here um, and, you know, something to sort of keep us ticking along. But obviously it's been tough. You know, it's, it's not the same as being in the restaurant and putting putting plate, uh, food on plates that's what we're passionate about so um oh, we have got through it and, and we're very grateful you know our, our boxes sold out every week that we've done them and you know it's um it's been keeping us going if nothing else and it was through your pop-up that great british menu reached out to you wasn't it when they you know, right, yeah what? yeah so they have been um i had got a and it's, they actually approached me via instagram i got a message from one of the producers um Actually, when she messaged me, I didn't reply because I thought it was, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> um, 
I didn't even believe that it was happening because I've only been a chef for seven years. You know, I, I, I wasn't always doing it. And um, I'd always sort of been, especially as a female chef, it's very hard to, to make yourself known in Northern Ireland and well, globally, really, you know, female chefs are, are not as common. And so the, uh, the pop up was basically I started it as my opportunity to do something totally different. Um, you know, I was I, I was working in a two rows at restaurant as a sous chef and it was it was great, but people wanted the same thing all the time, especially in pastry, you know, no matter what exciting things I put in the menu, they always ordered sticky toffee pudding, you know, whereas the yeah the pop up was an opportunity for me to force people to eat something that they hadn't tried before and to love it. So um that's sort of where the, the pop up went. Um I obviously got a photographer in with me while I'm doing it I put the photos on Instagram and it just took off and that's why Great British Men you got in touch yeah and I mean am I right in saying that this was not your first choice first of all you tried to be a nurse and then you trained in computers but you had an accident and hurt your spine is that right what is it sorry I've said it, you did you have an accident and hurt your spine during yes yeah, so, well I, it's uh, it's something I was actually born with but it, it was something that didn't become an issue until I started nursing and I started lifting people and before that I was you know when I was at school I was working in Tesco I wasn't doing anything overly manual um, and then when I started lifting people I started getting pain in my lower back um, and I basically I had to get an MRI scan done and it turns out my spine is off where it should be and as a result, I had to leave nursing because I had to get treatment and I was liable, you know, obviously if I was to drop a patient. But that was always, that was the goal, leaving school, you know, I done my A-levels, got into Queen's University and um, I just wanted to help people. And that was, that was my original plan. Obviously it didn't happen and everything happened for a reason because I'm doing this now and I, I really believe this is what I was meant to do, you know. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but there's a big, very lucky, you know, there's a big U-turn between, I mean, I think you, you also explored computers, but big U-turn between that and this. And thank goodness, I'm sorry, thank goodness you went into this because, yeah. oh, you know, you're right. Sometimes you have to you have to kiss a few frogs to, in business, you know. To yeah, absolutely. To, to be honest with you, I think I had I had done pretty well in school and, you know, I'd always been quite an academic person. Um, and whenever I was in school, I never really thought of hospitality as a career. Um, I was always, you know, the school I went to, it was it was a fantastic school and I, it was very much geared towards going to university and, you know, going down the medicine route or, you know, that sort of a thing. And that's why I went back and done um, software engineering because in my head, I had sort of thought, well, I worked hard on my A-levels, I should probably get a degree. And I knew at the time I had a wee bit of interest in computers, but software was starting to really take off, you know, back then. And when I, I decided that was probably the best way to go. And I started doing the degree and I absolutely hated it. Turns out <laughs> sitting behind your desk is just not for me. And um, so uh, I'd done the first year, I'd done the foundation degree in it. And then in my second year, fell into cooking, started as a commie chef in a restaurant in Belfast and transferred to the culinary arts management degree at Ulster University. And then graduated from that two years ago um, with a first class honours. So I was going to say, I thought you were just going to throw that under the bus. I just graduated. I was going to say first class honours. I mean, that's not like, you know, just like I graduated. That's. <laughs> yeah, I think it, was, it was an incredible, um, it was an, a, an incredible university. And, you know, I learned a lot of what I was doing from there. Um, and, you know, I. I worked full time while I went to uni full time, so I didn't take a day off for three years. Um, so that was kind of tough, but I mean, it was all worth it. You know, I, like I said, I, I did graduate with the first, and um, I still go back to the uni. I speak to them all the time, and I have a massive support from from the lecturers and you know stuff like that. So it it's definitely it was definitely an incredible experience going to uni. But in in some of the stuff I've read, I mean, there's always that question about who influences you in your cooking. But it was your parents, wasn't it, that you you put down as the the people who? I, I don't want to use influence because it's just like you know when you're at home, you don't think it's an influence, do you? You just think that's what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like we, Lauren's sitting there saying she's my influence. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, they were. My mom was a chef a long time ago, and uh, before she had us. And my my parents are foodies. You know, they love their food, and even more so that I'm more. Uh, you know, they're they're very hardworking, and I think I take a lot of what the person I am from them, and they're they're an incredible support for me. So you know, I, I definitely wouldn't be on Great British Menu without them. You know, so 
think it's always nice to have that those people in your life that sort of always push you to to go that bit further and that was them you know so yeah. I was definitely going to done it without them it's interesting you saying that people who support you I saw one of your posts on Instagram um in your stories I think and there's something that says I can't remember the exact word for it but something that mentions about um people who didn't want to support you now want to make want to contact you or something is that what it says in that yeah yeah I thought that was interesting yesterday and um, I guess Uh, yeah, it was like people that obviously, you know, I don't, I'm not in any way, shape or form a feminist or I'm not, I like, I've always worked actually until I worked with Lauren, I'd never worked with another female chef and we've only been together, we've only been working here together for a short while. So um, it is definitely harder to be, you know, whenever I started cooking and um, I work with chefs that wouldn't let me do service because I was female and um, I worked with with people who just had no appreciation for what I was doing. You know, one of my one of the owners of somewhere used to used to call me that wee girl. So you know, it's, it's not it's definitely not a, an easy career choice for um for a female. But I I was just so aware of how many people back then. You know, even when I was starting, and I was training so I didn't take me seriously at all because I was a female who now I are like I can't believe like it's almost like fans <laughs> in a way just because I was on TV and it's just funny how that how that changes and how you can go from you know from being sort of at the bottom to the to going near to the top I'm far from the top I've still a lot to learn like but I mean it, it, it's been an incredible journey like so it's it is it's it, it's always nice to have somebody that, that behind you like behind your back you know yeah, that's what Lauren's for there. Look, she's just shake the camera, Lauren. Yes. <laughs> so tell me what you've done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> tell me what's in that pan. So in the pot here, so far, we just have, we just have the cream and we have some stock. I just put some corn flour in there to thicken it up. I just took some out of here because um, obviously by the time I get that all these will be finished here. So. I just want to put on a wee pot here so I have a chance to show you. So yeah. that sauce is right off now, and I'm going to throw um, the fish and all the veg in there. Okay. So just over here, just some of these vegetables up just to make them a bit thinner, a bit smaller, and it just means that whenever we're cooking them, uh, they'll have a chance to cook through and get nice and warm. Yeah. I mean, this is why I'm talking so much, because obviously I never, never talk too much. Um, because this, because this is a such a simple recipe that, in full of flavour, um, you you can you can do other things, can't you? While you, you're making this, so it's pretty cool. I've got a question. I've, I've got a question for you. Okay, give me one top tip for a home cook. One top tip um, for a home cook for me would probably be being always taste as you're cooking, um, and that you can always add more but you can never take back so if you over season something it's very hard to bring that back but if you only add salt gradually it means that you can taste it after every time and eventually get to the perfect season which you can't do obviously unless um unless you add it as you're going okay. um, so always season gradually and uh, taste everything that you do so now here's the fish yeah so we're just going to put some of that lovely fish in there now and the recipe for this is on leeandthesweetlife.com. It'll be up by the end of the day with pictures and all links back, back to Gemma and all that she's doing. Some of them bacon in there. They're already pre-cooked. Yep. Oh. Lizzie, I want this. And powder, like anything, you can sort of... This is a very traditional powder, but I mean, you can add whatever sort of thing. Um, you know, uh, wild garlic at the minute is obviously very popular. It, it would be lovely to get uh, wild garlic. Obviously, there's garlic in the uh, in the stock as well. So you know, it's it's possible to put in whatever you want in there. It's, it's just up to individual. Can you, you make know? this really, really posh? And if you you know have a romantic night um, and can afford it, just pop some lobster in there instead of. Um... Absolutely. Yeah, of course. And any sort of any sort of seafood at all, um, you can put in there. Um, we tend to stay away from the seafood just for now because obviously um, we're 
not open fully, so it's only our doors lined in. Um, so we don't uh, tend to put Love that. Oh my God, it's so simple. Okay, I've got another question and I'm, I think I might know the answer to this one. Food fad, what is the food fad that you're glad is gone? Um, to be honest, uh, avocado. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously avocado is like, oh, whoops. The, the, the vegetable of the 21st century. Everybody seems to love avocado and sardo and don't get me wrong, it, like, the volume that we have sold it in, especially in previous restaurants that I've worked in, um, I find it really unsustainable. So I'm quite passionate about sustainable cooking. Um, you know, if I, if I order in an entire animal, I, I would rather use all of the animal as opposed to just using the bits that, um, the bits that are needed. So um, I think in, in that sense, you know, if, if you look, if you research it, you know, avocado, Farms are, are taking over the world because of the, the demand. So, and, and for that sense, I'm glad it's gone. And because if I see another avocado and poached eggs, I'm sorry, we're going to squeeze. <laughs> I get it. And do you know what? How many pictures have you seen? How many, especially lockdown, the banana bread and avocado toast? I mean, I oh. Love it. And listen, I love a banana bread. Like, to get banana bread with water on it, you can beat it, but it's, uh, yeah mad that's it all, all you've seen in 2020 was avocados you know so <laughs> it's true it is true. and i'm probably guilty of that as well i mean i have to say okay so favorite things give me some favorite things you like to cook with look at that oh we'll just keep moving that about as well just so it doesn't stick to the bottom i mean you're yeah. only going to be looking at this i put a lot of fish in there and that's probably enough for about four people um, but you're only going to be watching this for a couple of minutes, so just keep stirring it to make sure that the bottom of the pot doesn't stick because obviously you've got cream and stuff in there as well. Did you say four people? Because I know on Great British Menu, the, one of the things that you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Well, of course, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I could eat all of that, never mind four um, portions. Listen, it, as I said, I was talking to Andy Oliver about this um, after the show. See if I had to put a portion that size out to a smaller than that out to one of my guests and charge them 18 quid for it they would send it back and ask for the rest yeah More than our, we love our food here like you know it's not you haven't left unless you feel sick when you're leaving the restaurant so <laughs> you know, that's that's how we work that's how we roll and we're not London here you know we like we like our big portions we like our spuds so um yeah uh the portions were were definitely something that I struggled with well, listen, I'm with you. I would have, but that when you say four people, I would just have that myself for lunch. I'm not, you know, I mean, look at that, it's gorgeous. So it only takes a couple of minutes to cook the fish, you're saying, because everything's pre cooked. So, yeah. you know, it's it's a quick, quick thing. Oh, what does it need? What can I ask you a question about salt? What sort of salt do you like to use? Question about uh, we use uh, Malvin sea salt. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit thicker, and then obviously you can break that down in your fingers if you want it a bit thinner. Yeah. We would use that for, for seasoning a lot because it's quite intense. Um, but then obviously, if you want, you could just use your table salt as well. Um, but Malden's really hard to get there. Yeah. And actually, that's another thing you can get in, in Aldi and things. It's not expensive nowadays. And actually, <laughs> We, I, for me, I'm a big mold and salt thing. I wish I had a commission for it every time I talk about mold and salt, quite frankly. It'd be nice. So is that ready? That's also oh, yeah, as simple as that. So, so yeah. I mean, Lizzie, that's how quick that is. It's just incredible, isn't it? Oh, it didn't take long at all, did it? No, well, it's I, wanted, I do want to put my face in it, though. Um, which probably would oh and that bottom bread oh my lord look at that just thank you Lauren you're doing a grand job there look at that. Uh, here. Uh, my here. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh I love that look at this and from every angle as well, Lauren, you're getting right, right around there, look, you know? Get in there. Oh, we've got some chef. Chef stuff going on now. You see that beautiful, that beautiful fish just flaking away there. Oh, my Lord. 
it's just gorgeous just fabulous. So it's super simple super quick to make i mean that was for four people and it took us less than 10 minutes yeah. so if you're making yourself a portion two or three minutes as long as that fish is cooked that's it because your potatoes are pre-cooked your bacon's pre-cooked so you're just reheating all of that whenever you're you're bringing it on the, the boil it's oh, crazy good thank you for that i still got questions to ask you so you know that was so quick <sighs> Okay, so three things that you like to cook with and three things that you like to eat, but they might be the same, so I don't know. Okay, three three things I like to cook with. Um, garlic, butter and chocolate. Not together, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> garlic, to me, is like, I, I could live in a field of garlic. You know, it, it, to me, it's one of the best flavours. That's why I love wild garlic at the minute as well. We have a, a wild garlic flute on at the restaurant at the minute. Um, so it's lovely when that's in season. Um, obviously chocolate for me being a pastry chef um, I just love I don't know if you've seen on the show but I have a new catchphrase now Jesus Christ I love chocolate because for some reason they decided to air that um, get t-shirts you need t-shirts and start yeah, selling yeah, t-shirts done it's literally me on TV sucking a spoon talking about my love for chocolate like I'm going to be the face of Fat Club next year um, <laughs> but yes yeah, so that was that. So I love chocolate. Um, I love working with chocolate. Um, and I love inventing things with it, and uh, butter as well because fat is flavor, you know. So I mean, yeah. we saute everything in the restaurant, and like I said, we use the well, the local butter as well, which is fantastic. Three things I like to eat: uh, mashed potatoes because I'm Irish. Um, mashed potatoes with broccoli and gravy. Mashed potatoes, broccoli, and gravy. That's it. That's all you need. That's it. That's the staple of life. You know, that's it. When we were growing up, that's what we ate seven days a week was we call it baby bowl because it's obviously mashed up. You mash the broccoli in, you know, so it's and it's just incredible. Um, or hot sauce. I love hot sauce on anything. Love this. And noodles. I do. I love noodles as well. Do you know what? I'm serious. You need to get that on a T-shirt and start selling it for, for your charity. What is your charity? You know, uh, it's called GBT Getting Better Together. I love so that. So we're on, we're on Facebook. Um, at the minute, we do a lot of different stuff in the community in Belfast, and we would go to um, a couple of the uh, like the communion or the community. What's that word? Remember? Community halls, um, and talk about anxiety and how to deal with it and depression and things like that. And um, so, yeah, it's been going very well during lockdown as well. Yeah, get your t-shirts sold for that. I think it'd be good. Okay, so yeah. if if it was my birthday, what would you say on my birthday wish list? One one item for my kitchen. As a kitchen staple. Yeah. So something you need. I think everybody in a kitchen needs a kitchen aid. Um yeah. obviously we use that for a lot of stuff here. Um obviously you don't a kitchen aid is probably about a new one. You're talking about four or five hundred pounds. Any sort of mixing equipment, um, you can get them on Amazon for sixty pounds. You know, it's to me it's the most important thing you can have in any kitchen. KitchenAid, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I, again, I should get commission because KitchenAid, I bought them for all of, say, I bought them for Christmas presents for my kids and everything like that. And my, one of my kids has got one of my old ones secondhand. And when I had the cafe, they had that. It's all, you know, KitchenAid's the way to go. Okay, here's the most important question of all and really personal, and I'm really sorry. So do you have a favourite knife? A favourite knife, yeah. So, uh, I actually, so... I love, um, I actually got a new set of knives for going on Great British Menu because why not? Why not? Um, <laughs> so I got a new set of knives um, that was actually the Pro Cook ones. And um, so it's Pro Cook Elite. They're a nice set of knives. Um, but any sort of, I love a Japanese knife. You know, the, we have the, this one here. Let's see, it's like, um, it's got a beautiful oh, blade on it there. Ah, yes. So they're quite lightweight. Um, so that's a stunning knife, but to be honest, um, we were actually discussing this before we came on in terms of knives, Victorinox knives, um, they're pastry serrated knife, we, we couldn't live without, you know, so if I had to choose one knife, it would be that, mm -hmm. mainly because it's actually really cost effective, it's only about £28 a knife, um, and you'll get, if you look after it, you'll get a few years out of it, um, but the serrated edge on it's fantastic, you can use it for absolutely anything. Yeah, and do you let anybody else cook with your posh knife? Yes, I do. Lauren loves to cook with my knives, oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. in the kitchen. So, um, yeah, they were, they were, my knives were actually really nice and sharp before Lauren started using them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
Uh, yeah, no, we, we all share knives in this kitchen. You know, it's we uh, we have a lovely team here and we're all very, very close, you know. So, um, what, it, what you, mine me, is that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That's, that's it. So I just want to say to everybody, you know, first of all, everything that Gemma's been talking about will be on leadingthesweetlife.com. You can, and everything will be related back to all Gemma's social media things. Look out for the charity, look out for that t-shirt. Um, check, uh, check out Foodie Book Club, please subscribe. It's free and we give you discounts and we some all to support the emotional well-being of ever, everybody. And hopefully Gemma and I are going to do some other stuff together. I'm hoping we are. So say, yeah, say goodbye and thank you so much. In the thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on and thanks for the continued support. Oh, okay. Bye Gemma. Cheerio guys, all the best. <laughs>